You look at this. Uh, David uh, on his podcast did a uh, a draft of all the uh, former Bears and former coaches and former GMs that are in Atlanta. Um, you know, the the guy that stands out is Cordero Patterson. He wasn't used maybe the way you wanted him to be used in Chicago, but, man, they use him right there. Oh, my. He's uh, fun to watch. I always love uh, CP Flash. Uh, you know, when he first got here, he was kind he didn't, he was not the personality that he is now. He was very uh, – he was kind of quiet. And I remember going up to him. I wanted to do a TV interview with him about chasing the, you know, kickoff return record. And, you know, he didn't want to do it, and he didn't want – he wouldn't even, like, turn around in the locker room to even look at me. And so I finally explained what we were trying to do, and he was fine. And then, you know, the, the more he got acclimated here, and then he said, okay, you know, when I, when I get close to the record or if I'm going to break the record, you know, we'll, we'll sit down and talk. And he, he was delightful, though. He was great. as uh, I got to know him, and he just opened up a little bit. Uh, but he's a tremendous player. And you still gotta you still gotta value him as a kick returner. And now they, you know, he's been injured this year, so they haven't used him a ton in that regard. But I'll guarantee, I bet he's on that field. You know, how cool would it be for him to get a crack if somebody kicks to him to try to break the NFL record for kick return touchdowns? But offensively, you know, he uh, you got to tackle that guy. He he is a freight train, no question about it. He's not in the same category, but it, he is styled the same way. Valus Jones is the Bears' version of Cordero Patterson because he will be, I uh, presumably, in the lineup as a kick returner Sunday in Atlanta. Jeff, I wonder where are you with Valus Jones in terms of how quickly you want to see him in the passing game, on the field as a wide receiver because, let's face it, over the next seven games, it could be viewed as a seven-game audition for many players. See what you got. See what you are, are have looking into next season. Is Valus Jones one of those guys you're eager to see? Yeah, I am. I am for sure. And, uh, you know, Cordero's got two inches and 30 pounds on him, but they're built, you know, like running backs uh, that can run fast. So that that's that's one, and Bayless is a lot faster than Cordell Patterson mm -hmm. with a four three one forty. But yeah, um, you know, you, you got to work through it. Whatever has hampered him so far, and I'm sure the inactives the last two weeks, um, w whatever he says about confidence and how he's always been confident. I mean, any young player that'll stir you up a little bit, and hopefully, it fans the flames of his co competitiveness because that's usually the case with with guys that are going to last long time in the league. They They'll never forget the days that they were healthy inactives. Uh, but Bayless, you know, certainly at a bare minimum, you can use him on, on many different ways. So that aspect of it, especially with Khalil Herbert gone and the in insinuation that they're going to find whatever way it takes to keep that running game humming, if it's not just David Montgomery and uh, Tr uh, Tristan Ebner, maybe they, they try some other things. But in the passing game, he's a field stretcher. So let's, let's try and see how we can get that done. So we were talking about it. Uh, Jack Sanborn has a new nickname. He is, of course, the Hammer. Uh, that was awesome, Jeff. I was listening when first you used it, and I thought, "Wow, that is outstanding." Do you have a list of nicknames? Could we no, get? Uh, no. Could we get all the names you plan on using? No, it just happens. It just happened. Just the, the. I don't even know when it happened. It was some hit. What? You know, you euphoric in the moment of a young guy like that, undrafted, knows he should have been drafted, and has just settled into that position. And I did I did approach him in the locker room and say, don't get mad at me now. I kind of threw something out there. And he got a big smile on his face. He goes, oh, that was you. Because <laughs> the guys are giving him a, uh, the business already about it. But, hey, he's got that mentality, though. I mean, that's the other part of this, too. I, I can't sit here and say I, I know this man very well. I've only spoken to him a few times. I met him at the Combine. He grew up listening to Tom and I, so that was kind of cool. And you always think, gosh, you know, that, you know I'm really getting old. But, um, you know, he's a bear. And he's, he, when he's walking around, he just, he's, he's got the thick neck. He's got the attitude. He's, he's an ideal middle linebacker. And I love seeing his success on Sunday. Yeah, great nickname. What rhymes with Ebner? <laughs> you have to work you know you one. have to be determined big dave i'm having enough trouble people are hitting me left and right on the justin stuff i mean i i mean it just gotta it's just gotta happen i i don't know i have no idea but it'll be fun when something's coined i mean i know a lot of people are probably trying 
What are you expecting Sunday from him, from the Bears' offense? These are two teams that lean into the running game. The Bears are on a historic pace running the football. They are the best at it in the National Football League, largely because of Justin Fields. Jeff, with the heavy legs, with the defense is now probably geared to try to you know establish an edge, what do you expect from the Bears' offense if they are going to make any kind of adjustments at all? I think they're going to keep sticking with, with, with what's cooking right now. And, yes, you, you know, ultimately, as we continue to break this down, what he does from the pocket is also going to be significant moving forward here this season and his career to set him up uh, for what could be a, a spectacular 2023. But before we get there, I mean, this team is thriving on what they're doing with their, uh, their zone run game and Fields' uh, design run game. And so it's one of these deals, hey, we're going to do it until you stop it, right? That kind of thing? Hmm, sure. So, you know, why not? You know, I just – I quickly did this before I got on here. There's – I got like 18, 19 teams, 20. I, there's 29 200-yard games this season from these – the top 20 rushing teams in terms of average per game. And, of course, the Bears have – six to lead the pack. Uh, no, the next closest teams are Atlanta and the Giants are three. And of course, the Bears have the five straight. Uh, but uh, there's uh, so many more 200s than I actually thought were happening. Pittsburgh just threw one up last week. Carolina hit Atlanta with one. So uh, in this league, out of these teams, 78, 150 plus yard games. Uh, the Bears with seven of those. Baltimore's got eight in a row. So teams are doing this. And you, you go right to Baltimore because Lamar Jackson. And, you know, Lamar, they, they still can't quite stop him either. So let, let the good times roll. But the fair question, I brought it up on the coaches' show on Monday night, just asked him flat out, Matt, Matt Eberflus is, is just tired. And he didn't answer it directly, just say, hey, we're going to monitor all our guys at this point in the season. So we'll see. You know, it's interesting, Jeff, because we talked to, to Big Z yesterday, um, and after practice he saw uh, – Justin Fields with uh, with um, Chase Claypool, Darnell Mooney, and Equinemius St. Brown, and they were coming from about a 40-minute workout after practice, right? They're working yep. on things in the passing game, and they're doing that all the time. So the heavy legs must not be uh, – they, they, they can't interrupt what they're trying to get done in their practice, right? So he's still working hard. Yeah. No, he's done that every day yep. since the – since preseason, since off season, that's what he does. He's a gym rat on top of it. But you know, the thing is, I, I'm certain he's not running like crazy during practice. He is throwing, you know. And if some of these design runs, they're not they're not going to be pedal to the metal, or he's you know you know gassing everybody up with his with his spectacular uh, mobility. So yeah, I mean, it is. I think it is a fair question. You know, does it impact a and I'm not smart enough to know. You guys have had a ton of experts on the station, quarterbacks that can talk about it more. But does all of that running, a 67-yard break tackle run or the, the one at the end of the game, does that tire a guy's legs out to set a, a base to throw the football when you need it in the fourth quarter? I don't know that. So, Jeff, I think that with Justin Fields and the attention that he has deserved and commanded, it has – I think somewhat over overshadowed the evolution or progress of Cole Komet. I know he's gotten a lot of attention for what he hasn't done in his first couple seasons, but in the last three games, he has five touchdowns. Do you think that one is creating the other? Do you think because of what Justin Fields has done, we're seeing uh, more of, of Komet and reach his potential or come closer to it? Or do you think that it might help going the other way because of Cole Komet's emergence that Justin Fields has looked a little bit better in the passing game. So that 50 yard touchdown passes like we saw the other day are possible. I think all of it is hand in hand, you know, a plus B equals C and B plus a equals C as well. I mean, they have to be a great tandem. They do the quarterback tight end thing. You go through it throughout history and it's, it's so valuable to, to the QB. It's almost cliche. So I'm loving it. It's something I've been hoping for, and I, I've been <laughs> whispering in Cole's ear, you know, the, the whole season about it. So I, I think, you know, there are special tight ends in the league, and, you know, then there's special quarterbacks. But no matter where level they're at, if they can 
combine their assets here and continue to work this plan, I think it's going to produce good numbers for Cole Komet. And uh, I love the creativity of Luke Getze, how they packaged him a couple weeks ago. So I, I just would imagine they'll just keep adding things to the puzzle. So with this offense, you know, they keep, you know, at first I thought, you know, the, we're, it, we're 11 is one type of thing is just also just a, a cliche that we often hear defensive coaches use as well. But I, I'm now believing that, you know, what Luke Getz is talking about is exactly the case. They're, they're not necessarily featuring any one guy in any particular game. It's, they want to hit a defense with as many things as possible for them to have to worry about. But QB tight end, again, let's roll with that. I love it. Um, I, I'm curious, Jeff, when you look at the Bears' defense and – the fact that the uh, the leading sacker on the team is a safety and and that's he's barely ahead of the former linebacker. Uh, it, I just wonder they blitzed a ton. I thought against uh, against the Lions, and I really felt like every time they blitzed, it kind of worked. But they didn't really blitz a lot on third down. I didn't break down all the numbers of the game, but I kept thinking, you know, they're converting some third downs here. You got to go after them a little bit. And I'm just curious if you believe that that is something that, that they're going to lean on, more blitzing in order to get more pressure. And and what do you need to do that against a team that likes to run as much as they do? What do you, what do you anticipate in terms of uh, uh, the way they attack the Atlanta Falcons? Well, you know, it's, it's by quarterback, obviously, in offense. I think they only blitz six times. So, that yeah, all? that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot for the Bears, though. Yeah. So. You know, uh, going to be one of the, the, the lighter teams in that regard. But, hey, you know, they, they show a lot of five and bring only four. They they have uh, possibilities here now adding another defensive lineman, a veteran, Taco Charlton. I don't know if he's going to be active or not or if he's ready to, to roll as well. But, you know, Mar- Mariota doesn't love all that. Uh, so he will, you know, make some decisions that would lead you to believe he could take the ball away a little bit against the Falcons. So, I'm all for it. I love blitzes. I know it's not in their DNA in this particular style, but it's not like they haven't done it or that Eberflus's teams in Indianapolis, based on matchups, didn't do it. So, you know, they got to get some kind of pressure going and have it consistent, even if it doesn't get home on a sack. Just get your hands up in the air, tip some balls, because it is going to be a it's going to be a turnover starved unit if they don't get some more pressure on right. and just focus on a quarterback making mistakes. I mean, that's not going to net you a lot. Uh, each team, these, these teams are so similar. It's it's bizarre that both quarterbacks have 12 touchdowns and seven interceptions, and both teams have 13 takeaways. Uh, they're both even in the in the plus minus ratio, uh, and they both like running the ball. They both use the 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 wide zone, and they have a quarterback that's mobile. Certainly not as uh, magically mobile as Justin Fields, however. So Jeff, I want to ask you a question. I don't know if you can answer or not, but I'm curious. So I'm watching Jalen Johnson on Sunday, and obviously in the 44-yard completion, that goes through your mind, he had set out 10 snaps, he looks a little bit different, he looks a little bit compromised, he's got to have an injury there, and that's keeping him from making the kind of play he would typically make. He said you know, for, uh, later the, in the following days that that was in, indeed a factor. Matt Eberflus kind of pushed back at that, said if you're out there, he expects 100% production. When you're calling that in real time, do you allude to a guy who might be injured, who might have you know, less than 100% physical capability to do what he typically does? Or how do you handle situations like that where it looks like, okay, he might be hurt, he might be playing through something, but you don't know for sure? I leave that to the analyst, my good friend Tom Thayer. Uh, but no, in the, in the heat of the moment, that's, that's not crossing my mind. I did not mention that in this game, other than Mark Rudy did a heck of a job on the sideline saying that there were moments during the game where, you know, he was grimacing and, 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 you know, stretch doing whatever on the sidelines to get himself ready to go. But uh, I, I know what everybody's talking about here, but the thing is, this is a hard nosed player. And I did talk to him yesterday and he, he's ready to go. He thinks he'll be fine moving forward, but yeah, it, it, it did, it did cause him some discomfort in the game. Uh, but in, in to what level that it, was the reason on that play that that was totally the case? I'm I'm not certain, but no, I mean, it, you know, it's funny you bring that up because I really never mentioned it. I left that to, to the analyst and uh, with Mark's coverage on the sidelines. 
Jeff, um, you know, it's interesting because you do look at the at the injury report, and we're at that time of year. You know, it's just an NFL season. You're 11 games in, you're going to have injuries. You're going to have guys that are suffering things, and the injury report's going to disturb you. You mentioned uh, Taco Charlton. Uh, you know, they, they claimed Lane, they brought Adams back, and you got Charlton. It just seems like – the roster is constantly churning, mainly because of these injuries, and and obviously Khalil Herbert going down damages the run game. Yeah, no question. The Herbert one's a big one. I I love the way he runs the ball, and, and he and Montgomery together are are better than when they're not together. Obviously, that, that's a good one-two punch, change of pace, you name it, they got it, and uh, feeding off of fields and blasting game thrown in there. Um, but Ryan Poles before the season even started you know, suggested that this was going to be the case or injury or otherwise, if somebody becomes available that they're interested in, they're going to go and get them and the roster will continue to churn. And uh, I, I think back to what Seattle has done and the, the monumental number of roster changes over the first few years of, of, of Schneider and Carroll, uh, that could be the case here in Chicago. I mean, it keeps, I I'll guarantee it keeps the locker room on their toes and, in terms of the injuries, I think overall, aside from the Lucas Patrick and and uh, the Pringle injury that was a, a longer one, and now Herbert on a four gamer, you had Cody, uh, you got right. you got some other guys. Um, Harry was off for a while. They've been pretty healthy, so I, I think you know youth is being served here a little bit. This is a young football team, and they've been re- relatively healthy. And you'll just find out, you know who. Now, this is a constant evaluation, and I've talked to guys in the locker room about this. They know it. They know there's a microscope on. It's, it's every day because this is just the first step in the, in the process of what this team they ultimately want to build here. So not a lot of these guys may be back next year. So, you know, it's going to be a constant evaluation, which is always NFL football, uh, but it's, it's going to be it's, – it's, it's something different when it's on the ground floor of an operation. Quickly, Jeff, are you going to go out of your way this weekend to find Ryan Pace or Phil Emery to say hello? Absolutely. If they're there, you know, I will definitely run into them. I, I, I like to uh, do that with every team. Uh, but, yeah, I spent a lot of time with both of those general managers when they were here in Chicago. So I have uh, unique uh, relationships with all of them that have come through here. And there have been, there've been a lot of people, whether it be assistant coaches, scouts, or whatever, that uh, I'm always happy to see and uh, – you know, whatever people think about their football and how they went about their business, there's a lot of good people that have come through this organization.